Well, we want to tell you about how Congress now wants to give more power to the Internal Revenue Service to police basically the middle class, although it's clearly not being reframed as that. Uh, a new reconciliation package from Senator Joe Manchin includes $80 billion in funding for the IRS. Now, Congress continues to try and shove this $80 billion towards the IRS. It was in the Build Back Better bill that is pretty much dead. It was in the American Families Act. That has not been passed. They're desperate to get this money to the IRS. So some are calling this a way to weaponize the IRS. And we're some, gonna- Some being me. Yes, we <laughs> like, are too. But also the Wall Street Journal. I heard Journal story. I'm like, and- this is like, you're, you're literally taking a political organization. You're taking an arm of the executive branch and you're weaponizing it against your political enemies. Well, yes. And let me explain that a little bit further. So this is $80 billion of your taxpayer dollars meant to police your tax reporting, right? So obviously you have the right to feel some kind of way about that. I don't feel good about it. The current operating budget of the IRS is about $12.6 billion per year. So that 80 billion would be divvied up over nine years, giving the IRS an extra almost $9 billion per year. So that's like a, almost a two thirds raise, raise, right? Nine out of three, yes, two thirds. Now, according to the Wall Street Journal, the bill earmarks $45.6 billion for enforcement, including litigation, criminal investigations, investigative technology, digital asset monitoring, okay, and a new fleet of tax collector cars, uh, presumably Volvos. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Let's keep that up on the screen. So tax collector cars. So, like, we're going to see a fleet of, like, tax collector cars driving around? Well, you know, at first I thought, okay, what are they going to do? Like, where are they going to drive to? But then I, you know, I figure, well, you know, this does make it easier than doing a per-mile deduction, right, on your own car, and the IRS doesn't want to deal with that shit, so... Well, I guess, I hope they don't, I don't, I hope they don't mark them. They don't put on the side of the car, like, IRS, because it's going to be, like, open to violence. Like, can you imagine, like, you're going to pull up in a neighborhood... And here's I would an IRS car feel pulls up. very, I would really have to like, you know, stop myself. Well, and they're saying from, car. Yeah. But I wonder if they mean like more like, because I don't know if you guys have ever seen, if you search Google or YouTube, you can see where IRS agents in like full SWAT gear that says IRS on them going into people's houses. So yes, they yeah. already have like a, a SWAT type team. So are these going to be like, like military cars? <laughs> Humvees? An IRS yeah, Humvee full of filing cabinets. All right, you you don't like my <laughs> Volvo selection. Just, Volvo. It yeah. just seems so like. It's boxy. I mean, if it was a station wagon, maybe. It's boxy, but it's good. Yes. Okay. But then look at you know. Okay. Of course, enforcement, litigation, criminal investigation. Um, this one gives me pause. The, uh, the screen that was just up, Philip. If you could go back to investigative technology and digital asset monitoring. Yeah. Uh, that makes me uncomfortable, right? So um, we've talked crypto. many times about how, mm-hmm. yes, about how the, the IRS wants to get you to report even microtransactions like Venmoing someone for a bill or, or what have you, um, and that they want to be able to tax even the smallest transactions. And clearly they want to be able to not give you the benefit of the doubt for reporting those things. So. What will the return of investment for this $45.6 billion enforcement budget? Well, the bill estimates that all of this tax policing would bring the United States up to $200 billion in additional revenue, but not from the super wealthy, like politicians like to say that they're after, right? According to the journal, the main targets will be by necessity be the middle and upper middle class because that's where the money is. The Joint Committee on Taxation, Congress's official tax scorekeeper, says that 78 to 90 percent of the money raised from underreported income would likely come from those making less than 200,000 a year. Only four to nine percent would come from those making more than 500,000. Well, why? Right. Why wouldn't the middle? Why wouldn't the IRS go after the bigger fish to get bigger payouts? Well, that's because uh big small businesses don't have time to litigate and would rather sort of settle up 
when the tax man comes knocking and because more well, they have no often choice. they have no choice they do have a choice they can litigate but well, what i'm saying is they can't afford to litigate so they don't have a choice right but the irs loses more of its litigation than it wins did you know this i didn't but i'm not surprised because c-level accountants work at the irs we have a we have a great accountant who said you know this is a tom wheelwright quote this is not clayton provoking this yes. is not me provoking but yes what does he say he says that if um he, he, he says you should if you're what does he say he said if you're an accountant that works at the irs you're likely a c-level or you're like a you, like a C-class. He says that most IRS accountants are usually like C-level accounting students, accounting graduates, and, and that really you good. should aim for yourself to have an A, a student because then when they go to battle for you in an audit, your A guy is going to be more and, and usually knows the code better than the C guy. Um, and if you work is, at this, yeah, and if you work at the IRS, like if you're a good accountant, you're going to work on, you're going to have your own firm or you're going to work at a good accounting firm. You're not going to work at the IRS. Well, okay. According to Tom Wheelwright. According to Tom Wheelwright. Okay. Um, but I do want to give you this statistic because apparently when the IRS does, uh, there it is. When the IRS does litigate, um, they lose over half of their cases. So in 2019, the IRS only won 1.7 billion of the 4 billion that it litigated meaning more people won than lost. Why is that? It's just that their cases are bunk? <laughs> no, absolutely not. It's because wealthy people are harder to litigate because they have good tax lawyers, right? They have solid tax strategies. They have answers when it's like, why did you take this deduction this way or in this year? Or why did you use um, a cruel accounting method here? And they're ready for it, right? And they're ready to answer complicated questions and they will fight you. Right. Whereas the middle and lower class, I hate using the word lower class, um, the middle class and below, I guess, won't litigate. They have no choice but to just pay up when an audit comes. They don't fight even if they think they might be right, right? And so here's another statistic though that will sort of set your hair on fire. With all of this, you know, IRS beefing up, give them more money, will taxpayers at least get better service? Because if you've ever called the IRS with a question, it's like hell, right? So no, we're not going to get any better customer service. Even though last year, President Biden said that Americans should be owed better customer service on, uh, for instance, Medicare, Medicaid, the IRS. No, this beer, this bill uh, only sets aside $3.2 billion for taxpayer services out of that 80. And so, you know, it's going to be the same. The IRS says that in the 2022 tax filing season, it only answered 10% of calls. Yeah. And as of June was 21.3 million returns behind. So where does, you know, Senator Elizabeth Warren has been beating the drum on the IRS for a while now. She's been saying we're going to go after the billionaires, the the, the top one percent. That's where yes. the money is. We're gonna we're gonna get them to pay their fair share. That's how we're gonna solve all of our problems, right? That's gonna how that's gonna solve all of our problems. It'll solve inflation. It'll solve. Well, you, her you idea remember? is in this bill. Let's listen to what David has to say, and then what Senator Warren. Well, real, yeah, real quick. Do you remember the amount that it said they were going to start taxing now? Remember, like they were like, we're going to start taxing this low amount. And they're like, we're going to go after the wealthy, but they're like, but we're going to start l- tracking uh, transactions of what I think it was a low number. I don't think it was six hundred dollars. I think it was even lower than that. Do you remember? Recollection was five hundred and five hundred. Yeah, I think five hundred sounds right. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're going to start tracking. And like, that's so the wealthy. All, that's the wealthy. <laughs> yeah, right. we always know that this is going to disproportionately hit the lower and middle class. Right. That's right. exactly what this. I mean, Jeff Bezos wipes his butt with five hundred dollar bills, so that's not going to hurt him. Do they have five hundred dollar bills? <laughs> I don't know. I've never just seen on them. toilet paper. So anyway, here's Senator Elizabeth Warren. Take a listen. Over the next decade, IRS will fail to collect an estimated seven and a half trillion dollars in taxes owed. That's money we're leaving on the table under current law money that could be invested in childcare, education, a whole bunch of other priorities. So let me ask you, Commissioner Redding, one of the best tools the IRS has to ensure that people are paying their taxes is to audit them. 
check their numbers, force them to pay up if they're cheating. But since 2010, audit rates have fallen nearly 60% overall, and they've fallen nearly 80% for taxpayers with more than $10 million in income. Why has the audit rate fallen most sharply for the richest taxpayers? In the last decade, our enforcement personnel, we've lost 17,000 enforcement personnel. So we have 17,000 fewer people to do exactly what you're asking. And the point is, we actually have 6,500. That's our population that go after the high income taxpayers, the most egregious cases in the corporate world. So if you were to add 17,000 to 6,500, I think you'd see a reversal in those numbers. So he's saying, actually, this is to Tom Rulewright's point, is that like good auditors are leaving the IRS. We've lost 17,000 of them, right? He goes on to say, this is the IRS Commissioner uh, Reddick. He says that, you know, but we're encouraged that Congress seems to understand that we need more money and need more audit power. So we think that that will be reversed. Now, when she says, you know, all of this lost tax revenue could go towards childcare and education, that's a don't make me laugh type thing because does she not know how money is spent in the federal government? Take a look at this chart showing exactly where taxpayer dollars go. Um, education and childcare is not very high on that priority list. So, you know, she's asking us to increase our taxation so that we can invest in these things that we don't currently invest in. Keep this up on the screen. This is unbelievable, right? I mean, again, I come back to, I, I even think that looks low. Well, this is discretionary spending. This is spending that Congress has the right to allocate, right? It can change in any given year. This is not just sort of concrete spending, but at the same time, Right. For her to say it's such a shame that we don't have all these tax dollars because we otherwise would do X, Y, Z is really infuriating, especially in a year when they haven't done X, Y, Z or even got close to it when Democrats are in power. Right. I mean, and this money goes like someone in the chat just says this money's going all to Ukraine. Jennifer Brown in the chat says it's all going to Ukraine. And so her solution, which actually there's $15 million in this uh, reconciliation package set aside, is she wants to set up like an H&R Block type service that is in IRS.com. So basically you upload all of your you know, W-2s and 1099s and deductible receipts and then the site calculates, just like H&R Block or TurboTax, calculates what you owe, uh -huh. and then you just have to pay it. There would be, you know, and so you want to give the federal government the right to calculate that for you? That's a hard no. Right. Yeah, I'm sure they're going to be honest about it. Well, right? yeah. I mean, if you've ever used those so those software programs, you know that it will say, we think you owe this. And you're like, oh, but this deduction, but I think this should be deducted from this. Maybe you didn't. Right. And so the best way to really max optimize your taxation is to work with a really brilliant tax accountant. And so we think that the IRS's own H&R Bach tax filing system is going to give us really good tax planning and tax advice on like, well, you know, you could take this deduction. Do you have no. Right. And then what if you overpay? Could you appeal and get your money back after the first 21.3 million returns are got to no, whenever that not. will be right and then also another thing that i'm just concerned about because i know we continue to mention tom wheelwright who has a new book out by the way uh check it out he's an excellent um, accountant by the way he's an amazing his, accountant. his Brilliant. book uh tax-free wealth it really opened my eyes to how wealthy people think about taxation it is not at all about tax avoidance the tax code is written by congress to encourage people to build businesses right so um it's a, it's a whole different type of mindset it's not about going about going after people who don't tax it don't pay tax it's about making sure that people are optimizing anyway um he says that you really should never give the irs your bank account information and so this idea that we would like invest in this software where they would automatically calculate your returns and then either auto deduct or auto deposit your refund. I'm a hard no on that as well, because, you know, 
the federal government having the right to dip into and out of your bank account, especially in a, you know, in a high inflationary year, you just never know. Uh, he really, I know a lot of people do that. So they get their um, refunds their back refund. quicker. And he really thinks that's dangerous. And I do too. So I wait for the checks in the mail. Yeah. And again, he also, you know what I think frustrates, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say what frustrates me most most about this whole thing is it is how much Elizabeth Warren hates Donald Trump, but she appears to be streaming from his apartment. Oh, yeah. I see that. It did, did look rather did you gold. Notice that? I that <laughs> yeah. Like a gold pillar and <laughs> I, I you know, I I think what what sucks about this whole thing is for the average American, you know, they they who put up the good fight, they work hard, you know, they're working not just one job but two jobs right? They go to, they use a service like, um, I mean, H&R Block or one of these other services and they get screwed. Yeah. The tax code is so onerous. The people that work W-2 jobs are screwed the most, right? They get screwed the most. They pay the highest in taxes. And so now you're going to enforce the IRS to go after these people even more when you, when the whole, the United, the entire United States government is just one corrupt machine at this point funneling $860 billion to the United States military industrial complex and more than that, you know, these yeah. are, that's just the one bill. Like we know the billions per week to bombs and to Raytheon and to Lockheed Martin and Boeing and the American people uh, just get crushed. It really is just troubling. We had a poll that we put up earlier in the show. Let's get our results of this poll. What was the poll question again? It was the poll question was, do you think that the IRS should uh, be given more power? And it was 93% yes, 7% no. I mean, 7% yes, 93% no out of about 3,500 votes. So I would love to know the 7%. Right. Why you want to give the IRS more power? Maybe either those are um, enemy voters or, or I don't know. Clicked it. What's that? So we, we might have had some trolls and some accidental clicks. You never know. That's what I'm going to, yeah. I don't know. I mean, well, I mean, there are, sure, there are people who buy into the political line that, like, we need to go after wealthy tax dodgers, right? Uh, but that's not what they're really going to do. They're really going to come you know after if, if they do get the new the personnel and those fancy Volvos. I think we can figure out, a, I think what we should do is we should launch some I Heart the IRS t-shirts in the store and whoever buys them, we know who that 7% was. There we go. We'll flush them out. It's people that yeah. work at the IRS. I mean, they'll buy their yeah. own IRS t-shirts. 